Hello everyone, welcome back. No matter how many videos you watch, if you don't implement it yourself multiple times after learning, then most definitely you will forget it. So I want you to not only watch this video, but also in parallel start implementing it. If you need, you can pause the video and match up with whatever we are doing. Although this video is going to be very basic, so I hope there should not be any such issue. Now coming back to the topic of implementation of application level security. Let me make it very clear, it is not a simple task. You have to take care of so many things. But here Spring Security comes to rescue you, so that you don't have to worry much about the security and concentrate more on business implementation. Suppose you have a very basic requirement to have authentication in your application and only the user having set of username and password should be able to access it. For that, if you need to implement it without Spring Security, first you need to develop a login mechanism where you can retrieve the username and password from the user and then implement the comparison of received credentials with the actual ones. If credentials are valid, you need to redirect the user to actual page or resource they have requested. Otherwise, you need to create a login error page and redirect the user to that page. Not only this, you also need to manage the logout functionality. So you can see this is a long list of things needed just to have a very basic authentication in place. What if I tell you that all these things can be taken care by Spring Security and you don't have to implement anything for a simple basic authentication? You won't believe it, right? But this is true. What I'm going to do here is create a simple REST application with few endpoints and then just add one dependency of Spring Security in pom.xml. That's it. We will not have to do anything else and just see the Spring Boot magic. Let me start with creating an application from Spring Initializer. We have selected project type as Maven, language Java, Spring Boot version 3.2.2. After that, we are providing some project related metadata details. Now adding Spring Web Dependency as of now, security dependency we will add later. First we will develop the application standalone without security and test if all the endpoints are accessible. Now keeping everything else same, download the project. Once downloaded, extract that zip and open that particular project in your favorite IDE. I will be using IntelliJ for this. Now let IDE load this Maven project and all the required dependencies before we continue. Now the project is ready for us to make changes. This is our main class which is the starting point of our Spring Boot application. Now let us create a REST controller where we will define all the endpoints. First, annotate it with at the rate rest controller and then request mapping. Request mapping is used just to have a common prefix for all the endpoints present in this rest controller. Now let us create our first endpoint using annotation at the rate get mapping with the mapping URI as slash public. In the method public endpoint, let us just return a string that this is a public endpoint. Similarly, we will create two more endpoints, one for the admin and other one for the user. We are creating these different endpoints because we will be using these to demonstrate role-based access control in the next video. Now we are ready with our REST endpoints. Let us just start the application once and test all the endpoints. I hope you are also at the same stage, that is endpoints are created on your side also. If not, please pause the video and complete this step before moving ahead. If you have already completed, let's move to the next step. Now to test everything, we will be using a tool called Postman. If you do not have it installed on your system, I recommend you to first install it because in the upcoming sessions, we are going to use it heavily for get, post, put and delete HTTP request testings. Now, once you have the postman ready, in the postman create a new HTTP request and make sure to select the type as get. 
then provide the url in address bar as http colon slash slash localhost colon 8080 slash rest slash public and then click on send here we can see in the response this is public endpoint is returned which is the expected output now let us try to open admin and user endpoints as well So you can see we are able to access both the endpoints and they are working as expected. Are you able to follow the same and getting these outputs? If not, please let me know in the comment section or you can rewatch the video to see if you have missed something. So if you are also able to see these outputs, let's move ahead. Now the requirement is to make these endpoints secure. If you remember, I told you that Spring Security will do everything for you if you just want to enable a very basic authentication. Now it's the time to show you that. Let us open pom.xml in the project and scroll down to the section of dependencies. Inside that, add this one dependency with group ID org.springframework.boot and artifact ID as spring-boot-starter-security. This is one of the starter dependencies which Spring Boot provides us. Now after that, click on this load Maven changes so that Maven can download all the required jars in this project related to newly added dependency. Now Maven has updated the dependencies. Let us just restart the application. Now the application is started. Let me try to access those three endpoints again. So here you can see no response this time and also if you see here we are getting HTTP status as 401 unauthorized. That means user is not authorized to access this resource. Let us try to access the other endpoints as well. We are getting same HTTP status 401 unauthorized for the other endpoints also. But if you remember we have not asked Spring to secure any endpoint and on top of that we have not defined any username or password as well. So if we need to access these endpoints, what credentials should we use? For that, let us check the logs of our application. If we scroll to the left, we can see this automatically generated security password line. Okay, so Spring Boot generated this password for us because we have not set any. Now we have the password, but password is useless if we do not know the username associated to that password. So in Spring Security, the default username is user. And the password is automatically generated through user detail service auto configuration. This is the magic of Spring Boot called the auto configuration. Now we have both username and password with us. Now let us use this combination and try to access the endpoints. To do that in Postman, go to authorization tab, select auth type as basic auth, then fill in the username and password on the right hand side. Once done, click on send. Here you can see HTTP status is 200 OK and we are able to see the response again. That means we are able to access the resource from the application. Now let us update the username and password for other endpoints and test them. We are able to access all the endpoints now using the authentication details. I hope you have also made the changes and you are able to access the endpoints again using the password generated in the logs and the username as user. If not, I would recommend you to rewatch the video again and see what you have missed and once you are ready with that then we can continue with the video. So if you have already these there, let's move ahead. So we are able to access all the endpoints with the automatically generated password from the Spring Boot and the username as user. But do you see an issue here? The password which is getting generated from Spring Boot automatically will not remain same when we restart the application. So I want you to do one thing. You can save the currently generated password to some notepad and try to restart the application. So once restarted, you will see a different password is generated next time that you can compare with the already saved password from your notepad. This is not going to work in real applications. Because your users will have this generated password and if it is going to change every time application restarts then your users will be stuck when this happens and you have to update them again and again with the latest password. So is it possible that Spring Boot do not generate the password automatically and we should be able to decide on a pair of username and password 
which Spring Boot should use for authentication. Well, Spring Security is flexible enough to provide us that facility. You just need to define a set of username and password, then Spring Boot will automatically use it for authentication. To do that, we need to add a couple of configuration details or properties either in application.yaml or application.properties files. You can find these files under resources folder. The first property is spring.security.user.name. In this, we can provide whatever username that we want to set. And the next property is spring.security.user.password. As its name suggests, you can set the desired password here. In this example, we are using spring as username and security as password. That's it. You don't even have to tell spring to use these details or do any kind of implementation of username and password comparison. Spring Boot will do it based on the configuration details that we have given. Let us just restart the application one more time. Here in the logs you can see now Spring Boot is not generating any temporary password because it has considered the username and password we have defined in the properties file. Now before changing the username and password in the postman, let us just try to access the endpoint with invalid old credentials. Here you can see we are still getting 401 unauthorized response which is an expected response. Now update the username and password to the values that we have set in our properties file and try to access the endpoint again. Now here you can see we are able to access the endpoint with 200 OK status and we are also getting the response in body. Let us quickly make the same changes for other endpoints and test them. Now you should be able to access the other endpoints as well. So this is how we can implement Spring Security basic authentication without any effort in your application. If you remember, we have three different endpoints, public, admin and user. In the next video, we will learn about how to implement role based access for different endpoints in the application. We will create three different users with different roles and see how we can control the access to specific endpoint to a specific role. I hope you have developed the application till this stage with me. If not, I request you to please do it because only watching the tutorials is not going to help you much. You need to implement whatever you are learning. Also, we will be using the same application in the next tutorial. So if you have not yet completed it, please rewatch the video and complete it. In case you are facing some issues, please let me know in the comment section. If you like the way I explain the concepts. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel and share it with your friends. Also don't forget to press the bell icon because this spring security series is going to be an amazing journey where we will cover from basic to advanced strategies of authentication and authorization like JWT, OAuth2, DAO base etc etc etc. Once again thank you so much for joining. I'll see you in the next video. Till then happy coding.